Entrepreneurial marketing is a term that's been around since the 1980s. Over the last 30 years, um, many researchers such as Morris, Hills, Chaston, Stokes, um, they've all interpreted it in their own ways. They've all applied it to different contexts to what they believe that it describes. And that's what I'm going to be talking about right now. It's the year 2000. Stokes, this guy, he comes up with a definition for entrepreneurial marketing that focuses on the crucial role of the entrepreneur in any marketing activity. And then he also claims that entrepreneurial marketing only really applies to small and medium sized businesses. Suddenly, we rocket towards 2016, where Chaston brings about a new definition for entrepreneurial marketing that focuses on the behaviours exhibited by an individual or an organisation that adopt a certain philosophy of challenging established marketing conventions during the process of developing new solutions. Now, let's go back to 2002. Morris, this guy, describes entrepreneurial marketing as a proactive identification and exploitation of opportunities for acquiring and retaining profitable customers through innovative approaches to risk management, resource leveraging, and value creation. In 2010, we've got a researcher called Hiltz. He looks at entrepreneurial marketing as an orientation as well as a process of pursuing opportunities and launching, growing a venture that creates perceived customer value through relationships that employ innovativeness, creativity, selling, and flexibility. What is your opinion? Well, I don't completely agree with the definitions I've just described. I do believe that there's certain aspects of each definition that compile into what 21st century entrepreneurial marketing is. I believe that you need to be innovative, you need to be able to seize opportunities when they come up, but most importantly, I believe that you need to break the social norms that have been built up over the years and using technology available to you, use the social media outlets to show that you can be different and by being different, you can be successful and attract people to your business. And that is exactly what BrewDog did. It all started in Tokyo Beer, which was brewed at 12% ABV and was only accessible online. This got the attention of a regulatory body, the Portman Group, which then went to publicly condemn and ban the beer, which resulted in the story being picked up by Channel 4 News. The publicity spearheaded BrewDog into offering people to buy shares in their business, and with only two years of experience under their belts, they gained over 1,300 investors. This is a great example of guerrilla marketing with a hint of scarcity marketing due to the accessibility issues of the beer. But they didn't stop there and continue their research into brewing high percentage beers. This is when the end of history was born, a 55% ale that came stuffed in a dead animal and was named after a philosopher's Francis Fukuyama's work. The outrageous beer was produced in a minimal quantity of only 12 bottles, was priced at £55 and came with a personalised certificate. The only way to acquire it was through referrals and you already had to be an investor. This portrays the epitome of scarcity marketing. I suspected though, at this point, many news outlets jumped on this finding issues to get upset over. Main one being from people who claimed it was wrong to use stuffed animals. However, BrewDog blatantly told them to f*** off. You may think that this outrage and media attention would discourage people from investing and stunt the business growth. However, after releasing End of History, BrewDog doubled their employee numbers, quadrupled their investors to over 6,500 and also opened three new bars across England. Lastly, a cause-related marketing stunt stirred up the media and caused an outrage to people who don't quite understand sarcasm. This continued to fuel the publicity of the stunt to the point where most news outlets had published an article covering the issue. BrewDog presented a beer bottle wrapped in pink, boldly stating that it's a beer specifically for women who will also be charged less than men to purchase. However, the underlying message was to raise awareness about gender pay gaps, stating that issues like that should not even exist at this point in time. With over 32,000 investors, over 500 employees, and 40 bars across the world, my only recommendation for BrewDog would be to stay true to the heavily opinionated brand, because that's what attracted the customer and that's what made them stay. The customer is at the heart of BrewDog. And my other recommendation would be to not conform and stay politically incorrect because that's being different and being different has worked for BrewDog since the beginning.